Hello YouTube. It has been a minute since I have done anything like a chat with you whilst in my car. And yeah, so we're bringing it back quote old school back to the way it was when I first started my channel. And just we're just going to have a chat while I drive. Now, here comes the fun thing. It's June, my birthday month. And for those of you who don't know, I am turning 55 years of age this month. And when I tell you the last 10 years have been, mm, I don't want to say dark because they weren't, you know, it wasn't, oh, uh, it has been a wild mix of not so happy emotions. I'll put it that way. Um, and then, of course, we had the whole 2020 and all of the, well, let's just be blunt, all of the death and destruction that has been a part of human existence low these last six years? Six years. I have done some of any and everything short of illegal drugs and such to feel better, to be better. I got married and divorced for the second time in my life. And I have come this close, this close, to finding a way to adopt my 12 cats and go ahead and become the neighborhood spinster cat lady. As in, I'm never going to find my one kind of thing, right? But alas, here we are. And while I'm still fairly skeptical that, you know, my one does exist and will be here before I'm really, really, really old. <laughs> That's a topic for another post altogether. Nope, we are here because the sun is shining and I have been in a really solid good mood for the past five or six days. It all started with the cross-country drive from my home in Georgia to my home in Denver, Colorado. I don't know what magic occurred on this particular trip to make the difference, but I am grateful beyond measure that it happened because normally, and if you've been on the channel for any length of time, you've seen those vlogs, you've seen the whole, oh my God, I can't believe I'm here and I don't wanna be here kinds of things when I talk about coming back to my hometown. Well, this time is certainly different. It feels different. It, it has been different. And I'm here for it. All the way. I haven't felt like this since I turned 35. And if you know me at all, you know, 35 to 45, that was my decade. Man, whoo, <laughs> the stories I could tell, but we're going to keep those skeletons in that particular closet. But it's that same kind of mood where I am just at peace with who I am, what I'm doing, where I am, and those kinds of things. What's funny about it, I guess, is that... As far as my life is concerned, I'm sure anybody on the outside looking in would... <laughs> what do you have to be happy about? Business is not businessing. I am very single. Uh, I am not at all... Well, and <laughs> tangent. Okay, so I've... 
Okay, when I was between the ages of my entire life since puberty hit me in the head and produced hips and breasts in one way shape or another the males I come in contact with have come in contact with for the most part men I come in contact with boys men I come in contact with have let me know in one way shape or another either directly verbally or through their actions that I was attractive enough to want to have sex with but not attractive enough to be out in public with to to date to introduce to their you know families friends all that good jazz right I've I've almost always been a dirty little secret and I because I was so desperate for so long to be accepted, loved, cared for in terms of a romantic relationship. I put up with I put up with that treatment, right? Okay, so when I turned 35, I got to the point where I where I, I was like, you know what? I don't I don't care anymore, right? I am I'm not out here trying to be liked. I'm not out here trying to be loved. I'm just out here having fun. And I had a lot of fun. I mean, I had a lot of fun. Oh my god. The 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 dancing, the events, the oh, dude. Do that. Human. <laughs> when I tell you I had a good time, I had a good time. I was 20 to 30 pounds lighter. Certainly did not have the gut and the buttered rolls that I have on my back now. Certainly didn't have all of that going on. Uh, I was not athletic, but I was built. You know, I, I, I will I will claim that I looked good which is why the men friends wanted me naked you know that from the neck down I was hot right so okay again we, we fast forward uh, 46 47 the hair loss speeds up the weight starts to creep up a little bit and then 50 to just a few days ago <laughs> Oh my goodness, so the anxiety, depression, the disconnect from my from my body, the disconnect from my spirit was just through the roof. I felt as if I deserved the way the men had been treating me. I felt as if I was, I felt as if I used to be only good for sex and that I wasn't worthy of the love, care, acceptance, and, and companionship that I have always wanted, right? Okay. So, all of that, again, combined with, you know, the dumpster fire that has been the last six years. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You you get you get a not-so-happy Dana. You get somebody who was not writing, who was not promoting her work, who wasn't doing shit other than existing. And I was the worst for it. But I had already booked a couple of workshops and writer events here in Denver, so I knew I was coming back. And I was not looking forward to it, because you know, maybe, like I said, if you've watched any of the other vlogs, you know that coming back to Denver is always, it's a struggle for me. So anyway, so not looking forward to it, but knowing I gotta go, I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do, 
with, you know, for money and all this good happy crap, right? And then I get on the road. And I'm having what I would consider really good conversations with a good friend of mine. And for some reason, these conversations, it's like by the time we got to Denver and I got them situated, something had unlocked inside me. Wasn't quite sure, you know, what it was, but something felt really different this trip. I'm here for maybe about a day or so, and I hop online, and I'm watching another good friend of mine, Kate Bailey, sister goddess Kate Bailey. She is a phenomenal uh, life coach for women who are, and I hope I'm saying this correctly, neurodivergent. And working to find, to make, to claim their place in this world. She's really good at bringing out the best in women. So anyway, so I'm on one of her Wednesday talks. She goes live. Um, well, she's actually doing a really cool thing. She's going live every day for 365 days go queen uh and so you know on her facebook group uh she does these specific talks on wednesdays I, all that to say so i'm online and i'm watching one of her talks and she gives this definition or she clarifies the difference between addictive pleasure and true pleasure. And that singular point in her talk kicked open the door that had been unlocked during the conversations with my with my with my friend. I mean, kicked that puppy off the freaking hinges for the last six years things that have been occupying my time the things that I have become addicted to were providing me pleasure but it was that numbing disconnected I don't want to feel anything kind of pleasure that comes with things that ultimately aren't really good for you. And she explained it a lot better than I did, so I'm going to insert her definition here. Yeah, I've done a lot of work in addiction. I've shared about some of my own experiences with addiction as well. And I think that's another key. I can do a whole nother live on that, but I will touch on it really quick today just because Aisha brought up the word addiction and so many of us grapple with that, right? Um, what I've learned about addiction is particularly for women, particularly for brilliant, gifted women, women who are not neurotypical, women who see the world differently, right? We are designed for pleasure. And when you don't have pleasure in your life and you don't know what true pleasure is versus addictive pleasure, it's really easy to get caught up in addictive pleasure. Now you can beat yourself over the head all day and say, oh, I'm numbing myself, I'm not wanting to feel, but I will tell you, if you've ever experienced addiction, you are a goddamn genius for knowing what you are not ready to feel. Maybe it's not the healthy way, and I'm not advocating for you to go out and do harmful substances or become addicted to them, right? But the body can only take so much. 
and we know this, but we don't have answers. We don't have an understanding or a consciousness around how this works, around the difference between what is true pleasure and what is addictive pleasure. So I talked about this sometimes in my content, right? Addictive pleasure is any type of pleasure that really is experienced alone, right? The difference between what addictive pleasure is and true pleasure is, is true pleasure has the component where you are connected deeply to yourself or to other people, right? That is the difference between addictive pleasure and true pleasure. Addictive pleasure is normally experienced alone without a connection to yourself, right? Addictive pleasure is is without that connection to yourself or to others. True pleasure, you are connected to yourself or you are connected to others. And this happens on a chemical level as well, right? So addictive pleasure is more on the dopamine system in the brain. The dopamine receptors, um, they're kind of like at the base of the brain. We don't have as many of them. But when we do something that is addictive pleasure, it makes the body go, this feels good and I need more. So addictive pleasure is when your body gets more on the dopamine system where dopamine says, this feels good and I want more, right? Dopamine is always, we're not satisfied. We always need more, we need more, we need more, right? So whether you're whacking dope or eating a bunch of cake by yourself, it doesn't really matter, <laughs> right? That is gonna enforce the dopamine loop, right? When you are connected to yourself through meditation, when you are connected to your body through your senses, through smelling roses or jasmine or your favorite scents, if you are connected to community through something greater than yourself, a higher purpose, right? I don't care if you believe in religion. I know people go to NA, people go to AA, and yeah, you gotta like give it up to God, whatever. That doesn't resonate for everybody. Maybe your higher power is simply love, right? That is what I am in service of. I am in service of love, right? That is what I report to, love and energy. Those are two things that make a lot of sense to me, right? And when you are in service of something greater than yourself, that reinforces the serotonin system, which has like 14 chemoreceptors that go all over the brain and it makes the body go, this feels good and this is enough, right? You want more of those connected, true pleasure experiences, those serotonin production experiences, because it makes you say, this feels good and this is enough. Between 35 and 45, the pleasure I was experiencing was true pleasure. I was connected to my body, my sensuality, my sexuality, my likes, my dislikes. I was spending time with people who were in in a lot of ways accepting of that side of me. I wasn't isolated. I was able to go out, have a good time. I was safe safe as one can be in the world but I was with people who had my back and I was doing things just because I wanted to if I went to the gym it's because I wanted to go to the gym and throw a little weight around not because I felt fat and ugly and unattractive and the gurus told me I had to do this and I had to do that. See the difference? I was going out dancing because dancing was fun, not because I was looking for a man. Ugh. I was just freaking having a good time. And so, like I was saying, here I am counting down the days to my 55th birthday. and I'm getting that feeling back. I'm understanding that regardless of how other people see me, regardless of how other people choose to treat me, bottom line is, 
I just feel good. It feels like I'm back. And believe me, my empathic system is really, really trying to get me to crawl back up under my bed. I just, I, oof. My anxiety, all of that is, is trying to tell me that no, 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 it's, it's not safe for you. You need to go back. You need to go back into your cave. The rest of me is like, you know what? If I got to take a bullet. If I got to become a hashtag. And I'm borrowing this from Halise. And I will. I'm sure you've seen her channel. Uh, I will leak her. Leak. Yeah. <laughs> I will link her channel and all that good jazz down below. I highly recommend that you check her channel out. But anyway, one of the things she says is that she vlogs, she documents her life so that on the off chance, she becomes a hashtag, as she says. There will be evidence of the person she was and the life that she led, so y'all can't say nothing to smear or paint an incorrect picture, right? There, there will be no justification that you can manuf manufacture because the proof will be on her YouTube channel. And her, you know, she said that, watched a video of her, she said that a couple of days ago, and I was like, you know what? Yeah. I'm no longer doing this for marketing purposes. I'm no longer doing this because I'm supposed to as a business um, business owner, as an entrepreneur. Nope. I'm doing this. I am sharing my life this way because I want there to be, aside from my books, I want there to be evidence of the type of person I was and the life that I led. So if I got to take a bullet, if I got to die, if cancer shows up, if whatever my fear is, if, if any of that pops up, I'm going to have these videos. You're going to have these videos. Whoever's watching is going to have these videos as somewhat of my legacy. So there, yeah, that's, that's that. Now, in the meantime, again, I'm happy. And my channel content's gonna change. The way I post, when I post, is gonna change. I'm still in it to promote my business, but by that same token, if, when, I gotta go back to work. Then of course, my time to dedicate to filming and editing and all that good jazz is going to change dramatically. So, there is that. But again, it's one of the things with not really having a presence on YouTube as it is, I'm not so sure anybody's really going to notice, and I think that's all right. <laughs> I think that's all right. I'm just going to be out here doing my thing, press and record when I feel like it, editing, and yeah, we're just, we're just going to do this. So, all right, enough babbling for this video uh, because I'm almost home. <laughs> uh, thank you, as always, for tuning in. Uh, I have a Patreon now, by the way. So if you're still interested in more of my writing life, the author side of me, then hop on over to Patreon and you can get all kinds of, you know, fun goodies. Um, writing 
that I haven't shared anywhere else. Um, I'm also reading my books. So kind of like audio versions of my books will be on my Patreon. And if you are at all interested in writing your book, I am doing a live run of my Simply Self-Published program, which began June 1st. And what I'm doing is I'm going to be providing you with real-time coaching so you can publish your book. Or so you can write and then self-publish your book. Yeah, so all that's on Patreon. And of course, I will link, you know, have everything linked and such um, in the description. So yeah, so I'm still doing the business stuff. It's just over on Patreon now. And here on this channel, you're going to get the other side of me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It is going to be interesting. So, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share, please, because, you know, we can afford to grow on this channel. We, we, can, we can afford to do that. So, yeah, yeah. I'll see you next time.